it's Metalween, the time of year we celebrate metal and the movies based around it, and uh, before we dive in, I just want to give a special acknowledgement because uh, about a week and a half ago, by the time this video comes out, we lost one of the greatest guitarists of all time, Eddie Van Halen, and I, I just want to give a, a very brief acknowledgement to that fact. Just, just, just a brief moment of of appreciation for one of the greatest guitarists that's ever lived. Very unfortunate passing. And with that, let's get into our first movie, uh, where Eddie Van Halen is specifically mentioned. That they, they, they have a whole scene talking about Eddie Van Halen. It's Tenacious D in the Pick of Destiny. Tenacious D in the Pick of Destiny is a very unique movie. There are not a lot of movies like that. And I, I really appreciate that. I like how interesting and different it is. Maybe not so much plot-wise. It kind of bears similarities to other metal movies. But in terms of tone, in terms of sense of humor, the film's sense of humor is very much its own. There's not really any movies I can compare this to. There's nothing that has a sense of humor like Tenacious D in The Pick of Destiny. Uh, so that makes it a very unique film, and for me at least, a very enjoyable film. I know there's a lot of people who don't like this movie, and I completely understand. Uh, your enjoyment of Tenacious D in The Pick of Destiny is pretty much gonna come down to whether or not you find Tenacious D funny. And I do, so I like the movie, but if this is not really your thing, I completely understand. I, I'm not gonna try to defend this as like, oh, God, you just don't get, you don't get it. It's so good. It's so original. I get it. I get why people don't like this. It is kind of out there, uh, but I, I enjoyed it. I, th I think it's funny, and I, I am perfectly willing to acknowledge all of the problems with this movie, because <laughs> there are many problems with this movie. Uh, basically, Tenacious D in the Pick of Destiny is the story of Jack Black striking out on his own, meeting Kyle Gass, uh, forming Tenacious D, and attempting to obtain the Pick of Destiny, a guitar pick that is made of the tooth of Satan himself. And anyone who has the Pick of Destiny becomes an amazing guitar player and gets fame and fortune um, you know, great, one of the greatest rock bands of all time, and I'm kind of unclear on how the pick works, because they name a lot of bands that have had the pick, but it's bands that have, like, overlapping popularity. Like, they, they talk about, like, ACDC and Van Halen and, like, those bands were popular at the same time. Did they both have the Pick of Destiny? Were they switching off? Or can you just use the Pick of Destiny once and then you're good forever? And if that's the case, why did so many of the bands they mentioned get so much worse over time? I don't want to say Van Halen because he just died, but Van Halen was not as good in the 90s. Very, very bizarre, very, very interesting movie. Um, oh, and... It's a musical, so they, they play a bunch of songs throughout the film, and uh, the soundtrack, pretty killer. I listen, to the, I listen to the soundtrack to this all the time. Uh, the, um, I taught you guys the, the metal movie drinking game. Don't watch this movie with me while I'm drunk. I'll sing along to every song. Yeah, the music's great. And I, I find it pretty funny, so that's that's what pushes it over for me into being an enjoyable film. There's a lot of problems. I didn't realize till watching it this time there there's a scene where they like go into this uh like army supply store or something and they like sing this song about the government sucking uh to to like win over the the libertarian cashier. And he gives them, like, a pair of walkie-talkies. Apparently that's not in the film. Apparently that was a deleted scene. Um, cause I, I distinctly remember 
seeing that scene. But it's not in the theatrical cut, so it must have... Because there are... There are deleted scenes on this DVD, so I must have just seen the deleted scene or something. But what's weird about that is... Later on, they have the walkie-talkies, so it seems like kind of a relevant scene. Versus a scene they left in where Jack does psychedelic mushrooms that adds absolutely nothing to the story. It is a totally pointless sequence. And probably my least favorite song of the film. At least one of my least favorite songs of the film. And also it just doesn't make sense. Because like he, first off, he just finds psychedelic mushrooms growing on the side of the road. And it's like, nowhere, nowhere in America can you find psychedelic mushrooms just growing on the side of the road. Second off, it's implied that he eats many of these mushrooms. And like... You do shrooms, you're gonna be on it for a while. That's like, that's like an all-day affair. But he does mushrooms, and has this, like, brief little trip, and then by the time he's gotten to the Rock and Roll History Museum, he's sobered up. It's not how mushrooms work. That's not how shrooms work. And it's like, just cut, cut the shroom sequence... And leave the the walkie-talkie scene in. But they didn't do that. Probably because it was more expensive to film the mushroom scene. A lot of special effects. A lot of costumes. You know. But it's a useless scene. It, it adds nothing and makes no sense. And I wish they had left in the other scene that I thought was already in the movie. A lot of weird celebrity cameos in this one, like... Like, very brief... Like, uh... I mean, Amy Poehler plays a waitress, and Tim Robbins plays, like, this crazy old guy who's also trying to get the pick. And that... Those are, like, understandable celebrity cameos, but then, like... Amy Adams is there, and she doesn't even have a line. She, like, mouths, I love you, while Tenacious D is playing. And that's it. She, that's the only she, scene she's in. And, and like, Kristen Stewart is at the bar. No, not Kristen Stewart. Kristen Wiig. Fuck me, man. <laughs> Very different people. Very different people. Kristen Wiig is at the bar, just, like, getting drinks. And that's all you see of her. Ben Stiller is the guy at the guitar shop who tells him about the pick of destiny and he was a producer on the film. Um, just Ben Stiller, Jack Black are friends. Uh, they were in the cable guy together. Or wait, hmm. He directed, uh, Ben Stiller directed the cable guy with Jack Black in it and then they were in Tropic Thunder together after this, which is a great movie. Cable Guy kind of sucks. I don't like the Cable Guy. Although, Jack Black is the best part of the Cable Guy. Honestly, Jack Black, best character. Um, and then the Tropic Thunder, which is amazing. Love Tropic Thunder. <laughs> I, I will fight you on that one. Like, you say you don't like Pick a Destiny, fine. You don't like Tropic Thunder, we're gonna have trouble. That's a good movie. There's a couple musicians. Uh, Meatloaf plays... Jack Black's dad, which, it's a good role. Um, Dio shows up very briefly, um, and, uh, fuck me, dude. Oh, Foo Fighters, Nirvana, god damn, why am I blanking on a name right now? Dave Grohl, there it is, Dave Grohl, I do feel stupid for forgetting Dave Grohl. I just blank on names sometimes. I am really bad with names. I, I can be super familiar with someone and their name will just... Gone. Out of my memory. Can't remember it. Dave Grohl plays Satan at the end, which is amazing. I love it. <laughs> That's a great cameo. And I mean... Dave Grohl played drums on Tenacious D's first album. And I think also on this album, on the, on the soundtrack for this, he plays drums... So, 
He's kind of a member of Tenacious D. I don't think he tours with them, though. I think they have a different drummer for tours. I don't know. Fun, weird, crazy movie. A bit a bit of its time. I feel like this is a film that only could have been made in the mid-2000s. Not necessarily because that's when Tenacious D was popular, but because that's when big studio comedies were very common. You don't see studio comedies like this anymore. It was like, 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 from the late 90s, well, actually, uh, probably most of the 90s to, like, the early 2010s is when comedies were, like, big business for movie companies, for movie studios, and then and now they've kind of died off. I don't, I don't think you could get, not, not that I think you couldn't get this film made, but it wouldn't be made like this. It, it. It wouldn't be a big studio movie like this is. Yeah, that's Tenacious D in the Pick of Destiny. I enjoy it. Um, this might be the most mainstream film I've picked so far. I'm trying to think what else I... Oh, well, Enter the Dragon, maybe. I don't know, though. Like, possibly because this is more recent, I feel like... This is the movie I know the most people who have seen. Like, most most of my friends I know have seen this. Um, my brother really liked it. Uh, especially when he was a pothead in high school. Um, I think he's less of a pothead now. I don't know if he's off the stuff or not. He was a big pothead in high school, and he would borrow this, like, constantly... Like, any time he was going over to his friend's house to smoke weed, he's like, Hey man, can I borrow Tenacious D in the Pick of Destiny? <laughs> yeah, sure. I had to get- I, when I moved out, I had to get it from him. I'm like, hey, you've still got Tenacious D. I need that before I move out. Buy your own copy. So apparently it's good high. I've never watched it high. But... Makes sense. It does seem like something that'd be fun to watch high. I don't exactly know where to alphabetize this, because do, do you put it under T for Tenacious D in the Pick of Destiny, or do you, do you alphabetize it as P for Pick of Destiny? Because that's the title of the film, it's Pick of Destiny. It's Tenacious D in the Pick of Destiny. Usually I put it under T for Tenacious D. Next up we watched... Incubus. Incubus. Early 80s horror film um, about the Incubus, this, uh, you know, horrifying mythical creature who, like, he, he rapes and murders women, and I sincerely apologize to anyone who went into this film... Uh, at my suggestion, not knowing how much rape was going to play into it. I didn't know that. I hadn't seen this film. Although, if you're sensitive to that stuff, check the IMDb. Check, check the parental guidance section. Usually the parental guidance section will say something about that. So, if you know you're sensitive to that, please, please be careful. Don't just go into anything I recommend, because a lot of it's blind, and even the parts of it that aren't blind have rape in them. Fair warning. Fair warning. Don't go into the things I recommend blind, if you're particularly sensitive to that type of stuff. Kind of a weird movie. Um, you know, 80s. A pretty typical 80s horror movie. Very generic, not... Not too much to write home about. There are some really trippy sequences, and I'm not sure I totally understand what the ending means. Because there's like a kid in town, right? And he's having these dreams of like murdering people, and when he has the dreams of murdering people, they actually end up murdered. So he thinks he's like going to sleep and becoming the incubus. Um... So then there's, like, a, a hypnosis scene near the end to, like, determine if he's the Incubus or something. Kind of bizarre. 
But other than a few bizarre scenes, it's pretty typical for an 80s horror movie. Now, I know what you're thinking. What makes Incubus a metal ween movie? The answer is, at one point, they go to a movie theater and watch a music video from the band Samson. Now, I know probably none of you know Samson or any of the songs by Samson, but you might know the lead singer, Bruce Dickinson, who went on to be the lead singer of Iron Fucking Maiden. And also the writer of Crowley, if you saw my review of Crowley. He's in the movie singing a song, and it's very weird, because it's clear it's it's something the director had already shot for, like, a music video. And then Bruce Dickinson went and became the lead singer of Iron Maiden. And the director of this movie's like, hey, I got this footage of Bruce Dickinson. I gotta work it into my movie somehow. So they, they go to a theater and watch a music video at the theater with Bruce Dickinson in it. Because Bruce Dickinson was popular. That's what makes this a metal movie. I have nothing more to say about Incubus. That I know that was really brief, but like, what do you say? Now this is weird. The cover, on all three sides, Incubus... Incubus, Incubus, and even the Blu-ray says Incubus. But the IMDb page and the Wikipedia page call it The Incubus. And if you look on the reversible cover here, the reversed cover says The Incubus. So I, I, I'm pretty sure it's The Incubus, but the box just says Incubus. Not to be confused with Incubus from the 1960s, starring William Shatner, which is a movie I positively have to review. There, there is absolutely a review of Incubus starring William Shatner coming down the pipeline, because the whole movie is in Esperanto. Anyways, Incubus. I don't have that much to say. It's not that interesting. I don't recommend it. I don't regret showing it. I, 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 I have yet to fully regret showing any movie at movie night. But this, this comes kind of close. This is like... It's so generic. There's so little to say about it. That it's like, at least, like... Some of the lesser movies I've shown, at least they've been, like, weird enough to elicit, like, discussion. But, I don't know, there's just not that much to the Incubus. Drinking water is so good. Why don't I do it more? Finally, we watched Hellbent, and just look at that fucking cover. Ugh. Oh, it's, uh, Vinegar Syndrome. Both of these Vinegar Syndrome releases. Um, and thus... Both on Tubi for free, because I think Vinegar Syndrome is partnered with Tubi. Nearly everything Vinegar Syndrome puts out is free on Tubi. <laughs> so why do I keep buying their Blu-rays? They're good Blu-rays, but my god, they're pricey. Anyways, Hellbent. It's the classic story of a rock star who... Sells his soul to Satan, and he falls into disrepair because he he sold his soul to Satan. But he, his band takes off, gets super popular. Um, very cliche, very overdone story. Um, reminds me a bit of a more recent film, 2017, 2016 maybe, uh, called American Satan. Um... With Malcolm McDowell. Uh, it's an okay movie. Um, I'm pretty sure both of them use the same William Blake quote. It's, uh, the road to excess leads to the palace of wisdom. Um, it's, it's in this movie, and I know I've heard it before in another movie. I just can't remember which movie. And it honestly might have been American Satan. American Satan seems like a good contender for that type of thing. 
But I could be wrong. Don't hold me to that. I just know I've heard it from another movie, because I have not read William Blake. Between this and American Satan, American Satan's probably the objectively better movie. But if you ask me which one I'd rather watch, Hellbent, no question. It's so fun. It's so wacky and goofy and off the wall. Um, and I mean, it was clearly pretty cheaply made, pretty cheaply produced. Uh, the acting's not great. The effects aren't great. But it's so fun. It's so silly and goofy. I don't know. De definite, like... Metal Ween review material. Like, I, I could see reviewing this in a future Metal Ween. Although, to be clear, there are so many fucking metal horror movies. I could do Metal Ween forever. <sighs> so it might be a while before you see a review of Hellbent. But, it's an interesting movie. I, I do recommend it. Uh, a lot of weird stuff. A lot of fun stuff, because, like, um, Satan in the movie, his his name is Mr. Mr. Tannis. And it's, like, immediately obvious when he shows up that it's supposed to be an anagram of Satan. And it's so close to just being Satan backwards. It's like, why didn't you just make it Satan backwards? Why not Mr. Natus? Then uh, that'd make more sense to me. Why Mr. Tannis and not Mr. Natus? I don't know. Tan Tannis sounds better, maybe, but... It's not Satan backwards. It's just a weird anagram. It's also an anagram of Santa. Because this takes place around Christmas. There's, like, one scene that indicates that. Actually, this probably takes place over the course of a couple months. But right at the beginning of the movie, there's a guy, like, dressed as Satan. Uh, fuck. Dressed as Santa. So, it's a Christmas movie. Happy Halloween. <laughs> Happy Halloween. Here's a Christmas movie. I mean, you can see the guy dressed as Santa on the cover. He, like... He puts on a Santa costume so no one will recognize him as he shoots someone. Because Mr. Tannis is not just Satan. He's also, like... A crime boss who runs a gang in, like, I guess Los Angeles. I guess that's where this takes place. I think this is a Canadian film. It could pass for a Canadian film, at the very least. So, yeah, he just like, runs the criminal underground in Los Angeles. Great thing for Satan to be doing. It, it seems like Satan is overly concerned with, like, the tiny affairs of a handful of humans in this film. But whatever. It's fun. I love it. <laughs> Crazy shit, man. Crazy shit. It's from Richard Casey, uh, who directed Horror House on Highway 5, which I just mentioned in my Death Metal Zombies video. If you haven't seen my Death Metal Zombies video, um, there's a Richard, there's a killer in a Richard Nixon mask in that movie, and there's a killer in a Richard Nixon mask in Horror House on Highway 5. And the director of that movie directed this movie. I didn't plan that. That's just an interesting coincidence. Yeah, that's Hellbent. Just a, a fun, crazy movie. Uh, pretty cheaply made, but fun. Charming as all hell. I don't know, maybe I just have a soft spot for metal movies. <laughs> like, because cause nearly everything I talk about for Metal Ween, I'm just like... Yeah, man, it's it's not the best, but it's fun. It's charming. I like watching it. Fun to put on for some friends. But... Hellbent, I recommend it. So last week I asked about your favorite... Uh, band-centric movies. Since we were watching Tenacious D and the Pick of Destiny, and it's Tenacious D-centric movie, um, I would have to say my picks would be... Pretty much any of the Beatles films. I, I l Probably my favorite is Yellow Submarine. So if I had to pick one, Yellow Submarine. And also, of course, uh, Rock and Roll High School, starring the Ramones. I say starring, they have a very minor role in the movie. Because it turns out the Ramones were terrible actors. <laughs> like, uh, one of them had seven lines he was supposed to say... 
and it got cut down to two. And both of them were like, hey, pizza! Uh, Rock and Roll High School, great movie. Definitely gonna recommend that someday. So I don't think everyone understood the prompt, and maybe that's on me, but uh, Henry Koslick said Almost Famous, which is about a fake band, not a real band. That's not quite what I meant. But I'll give him a pass because he included a link to this picture. So, like, all is forgiven, my dude. Dog pics. Send dog pics. Uh, Nuno Q. Remalho. Remalho. I can't pronounce this guy's fucking name, and I can't pronounce the, the the his answer. It's Einstrusend Neubauten's one half minch. I know I got that last part right. I I do I I know German, so I have to figure my pronunciations close. Uh, this is a documentary about an industrial. It's just like an experimental industrial band. Um, and I, again, I, I kind of meant like fictional movies like Yellow Submarine or Rock and Roll High School, not documentaries. Technically, yes, that is a movie about a band, but <laughs> it's a documentary. That's, that's not what, quite what I meant. What I meant was more like Lino's answer he said the Monkees movie Head, although arguably that is also about a fake band. <laughs> they, the Monkees is kind of a real band, but they also sort of formed for a TV show. I don't know. I'm counting it. I'll, I'll, I'll absolutely count the Monkey movie Head. Um, written by Jack Nicholson, as Lino points out. Um, I have not actually seen Head. I do... If I can find it, here it is, right behind me. <laughs> I have a copy of it, I have not watched it yet. This might be a recommendation someday. Maybe we'll put it up with like, put on like a Beatles movie and then this and then a uh, rock and roll high school or something. So this week my question for you is, what is a divisive movie? You know, one where either people love it or hate it where you fall into the love camp. Uh, I, I want to know what movies you guys really like that a lot of people really hate. Uh, because, man, you thought Tenacious D was a, a weird, divisive choice. This week, I'm showing three films from probably the most divisive director ever. Like, at least the most divisive director I can think of. Like, people either love his shit or hate his shit. I am talking, of course, about the fabulous Rob Zombie. We're watching House of a Thousand Corpses, its sequel, Devil's Rejects, and its sequel, Three from Hell. Uh, it, it's called, like, the Firefly Trilogy. Don't know why it's called that. Maybe we'll find out. Because I've only seen the first one. I, I haven't seen the other two. I did like House of a Thousand Corpses, I may regret showing Devil's Rejects and Three from Hell. So. Oh. And you might regret watching it because, again, Rob Zombie, very divisive director. But we'll talk about that next time. Uh, Rob Zombie triple feature. Rob Zombie trilogy. Uh, until then, I'm Matt. Happy Metalween.